Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on June 6, 2023, recorded on 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot of things to talk about today, including the next tropical cyclone threat. Is there really a threat shaping up over the next several weeks? So we're going to go ahead and look at that and look at the overall pattern for the upcoming hurricane season. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we notice that there's not really a whole lot on going across the basin. We are monitoring a few systems out there. First of all, we are watching this little bit of a tropical disturbance in the far northern high seas of the Atlantic basin here. This is mainly going to be an extra tropical mid-latitude cyclone, so nothing really of significance there, but still could bring some heavy rainfall to portions of the UK and even Africa over the next couple of days. Another mid-latitude cyclone here spinning off the Canadian Maritimes. Again, this is not a tropical system. However, we are watching a few tropical waves down there across Africa currently that are residing down here closer to the equator near the intertropical convergence zone. A lot of dry air right now pushing into the Lesser Antilles, so certainly that is some good news after this area did have some shower and thunderstorm activity. So you get a few days of break before more tropical cycl or more tropical rain showers return. No tropical cyclone threat for this area at all over the next while. And then in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf is pretty quiet, but the Caribbean is pretty active with a big blob of rain that is heading towards the islands here, including places like Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola, Haiti. This area is about to get soaked with a lot of rainfall over the next several days, but no tropical cyclone threat at least for the next week. I just really want to quickly take a look at this heavy rainfall threat that is shaping up across the Caribbean over the next several days. This is the total precipitation off of the GFS model here. And we noticed that initially there's not a whole lot of rain shaping up down here. But if we progress forward over the next several days, we notice that there's going to be a lot of heavy rainfall in the Caribbean and into the Bahamas and the Florida Straits. And again, this is a result of that tropical moisture that continues to build down here. And we notice by the end of it, some places closer towards uh, Cuba, especially the southeastern tip there, could get in on almost 10 inches of rain and very close to the Bahamas, near 14 inches of rain that is to be expected down there. And places of even Central America get, could get in on near three inches of rain. So... I don't know exactly what the conversion of that into millimeters of, of rain because that's the measurement that, that you guys use down there. However, there's going to be a lot of heavy rainfall, certainly some mudslide and flash flooding potential, and certainly could be just a nasty several days out there. And this only goes through about day five. So this is through about the 11th of June, and this is expected to continue even onwards after that. So certainly a lot of heavy rainfall expected down there. And I just wanted to kind of Look, go over this real quickly because this is a pretty substantial threat for your local area. Now, as we head into the latter half of June, we are going to be monitoring some potential tropical cyclone formation chances either in the Caribbean or the Eastern Pacific Basin. It is way too early to specify who's going to be impacted or when or where or how bad it might be. However, the thing that we are watching as denoted by the white arrow here, you've got this gyre or big cyclonic overall turning in the atmosphere that is likely or probable to be setting up across Central America over the next several weeks. This is what's known as a Central American gyre. And these setups often happen early and late season. You get a lot of convection and a lot of thunderstorms as denoted by the thunderstorm icon over Central America. Now, not only does that lead to a lot of heavy rainfall, but this also can lead to isolated cases of spin-ups of tropical cyclones or hurricanes or whatever. Of course, you remember Hurricane Michael? That was also generated by one of these Central American gyre events. Now, we're not going to have anything like that, obviously, but the models, especially the GFS, are starting to hint on some development out here in either the East, Eastern Pacific or in the Caribbean. Now, the GFS has a well-known bias of happening to develop these random storms from convective feedback. We know the whole nine yards issue there. 
However, there is some signals of some development that might happen in either basin, and we're going to go ahead and look at that right now. So what we're looking at here is the European ensemble mean sea level pressure. Basically, everywhere where you see a little kind of red number, this indicates an area of lower than average pressure and gives you kind of a, a look at the different pressure members and how intense they might be. So this is looking here at the mean level pressure again, and this is looking at the ensemble member anomaly. So we're looking starting off today at two o'clock in the morning. We notice that through the next several days, there's not gonna be a lot, but we notice that there is going to be potentially out here within five days, we might be talking about some area of lower than average pressures and maybe even a weak tropical system forming in the Eastern Pacific Basin. Now, the members here are kind of all over the place. They're not very coherent, um, but the European in the long range here, this is just getting out to about days 10 and 11, do have what seems to be a weaker tropical cyclone here in the Eastern Pacific as we stretch throughout time. Now, if we look here in the Western Atlantic here, mainly the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean, there is basically nothing, but I do want to say that if we look going forward in time and just in the very long range, there is enhanced precipitation that does sort of make its way through here into the Caribbean, uh, really once we get out towards the latter half of June. And this is actually what's to be expected for this time of the year. We have these incipient waves that form off of Africa and they will not develop out here because the conditions are too hostile. You notice that these wind barbs here indicating trade winds that are roughly about 15, 20 knots. And you get in the Caribbean about 25 knots here. But down here where Central American gyres typically form, you notice that the winds here are kind of wrapping around indicating a little bit of a gyre setup. This is in the very long range. And so this does not give me high confidence but if we look here at the GFS ensembles and the mean sea level pressures here, we notice that, again, the GFS is also suggesting the potential for some type of tropical cyclone formation, possibly, in the eastern Pacific within the next about 10 to 15 days. And then if we look here in the western part of the Atlantic, you notice that it is really not until very late, roughly about mid-June, that we start to get any signals of development out here. So at least for the short term, tropical cyclone formation is not currently expected in either basin and especially nothing that is showing up here in the Caribbean, at least short term. But it does pay a little bit of attention that we are going to have to start to watch this area. I certainly do believe as we progress throughout the remainder of June and certainly as we head towards late June, I think this area is going to be a hot spot for potential development, and we are going to have to watch that as such. Now, shifting gears here, this is something that is going to become critically important, especially as we progress throughout the remainder of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. We've had above average rainfall in the Sahel region of Africa, which is denoted by the green outline. We've had generally above average rainfall in this area over the last several months. And really over the last several years, we've had above average rainfall in this area. And as denoted by the text there, it basically just states that above average rainfall in this area, we have more thunderstorms, more convection, more precipitation. And that precipitation is helping to reduce the significance of the uh, larger Saharan air layer events. So you don't have as many Saharan air outbreaks or as, as many significant ones, that is. And what that will do is, especially during peak of the hurricane season, that is going to dramatically reduce the amount of dry air entrainments, at least from the Saharan air outbreaks, which then promotes better tropical cyclone genesis chances. Now, again, it doesn't always equate to that. And you're going to have Saharan air events. That's a guarantee every single year, no matter how busy it's going to be you are going to have a large uh, Saharan air outbreaks. However, the temporal and really the distribution of them is a lot less. And so that certainly is one signature 
And one hallmark of a more active Atlantic hurricane season is more precipitation over Africa, leading to less and less significant Saharan air outbreaks. Now, the other thing that's also happening is we've got lower than average pressures down across the southern part of Africa and higher than average pressures across the northern part of Africa. And generally what this is a result to is the intertropical convergence zone and how the biomes are set up. But as this graphic illustrates, we've got African easternly, we've got an African easternly jet denoted by the straight arrow there across uh, portions of Africa. And what this actually does, this is a jet of air that is just uh, about 700 millibars or 700 hectopascals uh, up in the atmosphere, HPA. And this is actually responsible for creating a lot of the thunderstorms in this region along with the monsoon trough. And so as denoted by the little white arrows, this uh, indicates here there's a lot of cyclonic turning in this area. And we get a lot of thunderstorms. You can see the icons there. You get a lot of thunderstorms over Africa that move westward with time. And as they move westward, these are mesoscale convective systems. These are like thunderstorms you would see in the United States, except again, they're moving westward instead of our typical ones that move eastward. And as they get over the ocean, then you get these warm sea surface temperatures. And this helps to create the background uh, cyclonic turning in the atmosphere. You've got those systems that spin up and then they com can often become tropical cyclones as you get closer towards uh, the lesser Antilles there. And that again, is a process that is going to be amplified by these stronger systems that come off this year with more of these tropical waves, more chances for tropical cyclone development. So taking a look here at the Eastern Pacific Basin, just real briefly, we noticed that there is a lot of ongoing convection out there across the intertropical convergence zone today. However, again, development chances, at least in the short term throughout probably the next five to seven days are very unlikely. But beyond that point, we're going to be watching this area where my cursor is for potential tropical cyclone formation. But of course, that is in the longer, kind of mid to long range at this point. So we'll continue to monitor the forecast on this. Certainly do check back as we will continue to provide updates, of course, with any system that does try to form. But elsewise, enjoy. And I don't think we're going to have a video out tomorrow because there isn't really a whole lot to talk about currently. I think we've kind of discussed everything that needs to be talked about. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Ormali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more over the next several days.